welcome to the channel world. Today we'll be diving into Roman Britain, Chester. If you're new around here, click the subscribe button, like the video and click the bell icon for notifications. Let's dive in. The height of the Roman Empire saw the Romans have an empire stretched from Syria to North Africa to Spain to France and eventually they conquered Britain which was the province Britannia. In 55 BC Caesar set upon conquering Britain. He rallied two legions to his cause which is roughly around 12,000 men. He found these 12,000 men across the Roman Empire. He rallied these two legions in Gaul which is now known as France and he left the shores and set off to Britain. Britannia was known as the land of monsters and mythical creatures. The seas were said to have had sea monsters in. Because of these stories, the Roman soldiers were very, very scared and apprehensive. So the Romans boarded the ships and set off to Britain. When they arrived somewhere near Kent, they were met with thousands and thousands of Britons ready to defend their country of various different tribes. The Britons were armed with spears, shields and swords and very light armour. In some cases not even having shields at all, they wore war paint and were screaming ferociously. It wasn't until a soldier of one of the standard bearers jumped off the ship and rallied the men to his cause at which point they invaded Britain and the battle commenced. The Roman army fought a series of battles and skirmishes across southern England. They saw that there was no mythical creatures or sea monsters to contend with other than the ferocity that the Britons had showed them. They then left in 55 BC and left for Gaul. The Roman Emperor Julius Caesar fought a series of successful battles across England. They left in 54 BC after being victorious. The Celtic tribes had agreed to pay them an annual tribute. They were left there under the rule of the Celtic tribes for nearly 100 years. Emperor Claudius commissioned an army. General Aulus Platus was to lead that army. He had four legions which was roughly around 25,000 men. And in addition to this he had also an equal number of auxiliary units which were as I've said before specialist units within their own right. It took the Romans 30 years to subdue the Britons. They conquered all of southern England, Wales and the north of England up until the Scottish border. Chester was founded as Deva Victrix in AD 70s. An exact date is not known. It was destined to be a fortress during the Roman expansion of the north took its name from Legio X, Valeria Victrix, who were also based at Deva or Chester. Deva Victrix, the fortress itself is around 20% larger than the other fortresses in Britannia which were built around the same time. It's suggested that the fortress was destined to be the capital of the province which ultimately ended up being Londinium, which is now known as London. The walls of the city appear to be very impregnable. They're around 10 to 15 feet in some places, and then in other places appear to be 30 to 35 feet high. On two sides of the city, the River Dee surrounds it and acts as a kind of mort from a distance. The River Dee is very wide and has a very fast current and it would be very very difficult to cross without using some sort of boat. It's a testament to Roman engineering skills that in 2020, almost 2,000 years later, the city walls still stand. Some parts are still from the original Roman structure and on other parts they are from the medieval era. 
the council maintains these walls in 2020 just as the Roman army did in 100 AD the council helps to maintain the walls and keep them as a tourist attraction the Roman amphitheatre can be seen towards the bottom corner of the fort is a short distance from the River Dee. The amphitheatre is first originally believed to have been built by a Legio II. The amphitheatre were built by a Legio II during the brief posting in Chester at some point in the late 70s AD. It was then rebuilt when Legio X Valeria Victrix was stationed there and Legio 10 was stationed in Britannia for 200 years. The amphitheatre fell into disuse when Legio 10 were assigned to the construction of Hadrian's Wall. The legion was redeployed to build Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Wall is believed to be a wall to just keep the pigs out. However, what it did allow was to regulate trade between the Romans and the Picts. The amphitheatre fell into disuse when Legio X were no longer able to maintain it. However, when Legio X arrived back into Dever, they began reconstructing the amphitheatre. At its height, the amphitheatre held games for gladiators. It held around 8,000 people and it was believed to be 12 metres high. It was a magnificent feat to look at. Through the Dark Ages, parts of the amphitheatre will have been dismantled, the bricks and the stones will have been used for other buildings. The Dark Ages began when the Roman legions left Britain. It's believed to be a period of doom and gloom, however, what historians describe it as is a period where not much was recorded within Europe. But the amphitheatre to still stand in 2020 is a feat to Roman engineering. The amphitheatre was buried and left to history. It was rediscovered in 1929 when gardening works unearthed it. It was hoped when the bricks were discovered and the stones were discovered that it was in fact the amphitheatre. When it was confirmed to be the amphitheatre there was a road that was meant to be going straight over it. Everyone had to battle with the council to send the road an alternative way. They won their argument and decided that the road was going to bypass the amphitheatre. And it's because of this, because of the campaigning, that we can still see the amphitheatre in 2020. Thank you very much for watching the video today. If you want to see more from World, please subscribe to my channel. Please click the bell icon for notifications and please drop a like below. Thank you very much.